Hey, hey, Gator Nation. Welcome back to the Respect Our Decision podcast. This is episode 51. As always, I'm your boy, Hirsch, and with me is CJ, the man, McCann. What's going on, guys? And returning from yet another vacation, the hype man, Wes, is back with us this week. What's good? What's good? Good to be back. Wes was down there zip lining through the Congo, yeah, trying man. to trying to get away from the predator, and <laughs> <laughs> that's what it looked like. <laughs> hey, hey, Gator Nation, man! Great show tonight. We're gonna preview the Grill and the Ville going down this weekend. Big recruiting event. Practice starts next week. We just got done with SEC Media Days. We're not gonna really talk much about that. Feel like we've you know everything that's got said there. We kind of covered last week. A lot of coach speak, uh, you know. But the boys, the boys break go into camp next week, man. So we'll be we'll be talking about that as we get into next week. But we got a lot of prospects we want to talk about in town, visiting the Gators, letting Billy do some work. Um, but as always, guys, go out there and download us wherever you get your podcast from. And if you're checking us out on the YouTube channel, this is your first time checking us out, man. Do us a favor if you don't mind. Go ahead and subscribe. Leave a like on the video. Maybe drop us a comment down below. And if you did, and, and if you've got a bunch of other friends that are Gator fans, and if you wouldn't mind, maybe share share our channel with them. Give give them a shout out. And say, hey man, check these boys out. We 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 take all the publicity we can get, man. That's right. <laughs> As we try to grow this brand, we appreciate everybody listening out there and everybody that downloaded the episode of pot of the people we uploaded it to podcast form for the first time this week not just youtube and it did really well we appreciate y'all and we hope that y'all like that for those of you that you know don't get around to watching the youtube channel and as always guys be sure to check out our friends at alma mater man they are dropping new merchandise all the time probably about to drop a bunch more now that the season's going on and look out starting next week with next week's video. We're going to be doing a giveaway for the month of August. It's going to be for a swinging gator uh, hat. Got the swinging gator logo from the golf team on it. We'll preview that next week on the show and make sure y'all uh, stay tuned for details on that. All right, boys. Let's jump right on to it, man. A lot of kids coming into town this weekend. A lot of ta- kids in town now. As it just broke across some of the airwaves, if you're on Twitter or whatnot, um, it was just thrown out there that LJ McCray is on campus currently. So that's kind of a big deal. Um, it was kind of back and forth with it. if LJ McCray would be in the town. He had told people he was coming. He told other people he was might be in Athens. Um, but he's on campus now. So we're getting the first crack at him for this going into this weekend. That's a big deal. Uh, what would be ideal would be to go ahead and say, hey, LJ, what, what, what's it going to take to shut this down for you? You know, I doubt that goes down this weekend. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm optimistic, but I don't think it's going to. So don't put that out there on me, man, that I said LJ was about to shut things down. Um, another person that is teammates with LJ McCray, we'll talk about him real quick, is uh, Xavier Mincy, of course. Big cornerback duo there. Um, Zay is rumored to be in Gainesville. He's rumored to be in Miami. There's been a rumor he might be in Alabama. Um, right now we really don't know. Nobody can get a kind of a straightforward answer on this. So we're going to play it by ear and see where Zay shows up. Once again, this would be very ideal for Zay to show up. CJ, are you concerned if Zay Mincy and doesn't show up this weekend? Yes and no. I, I've, I'm concerned if we don't get Zay Mincy to commit because, like, I don't understand what what would have happened, what would have you know went wrong because like it feels like we've led for Zay forever. There hasn't ever really been a question of Zay's going to come to Florida just whenever he gets ready to commit, and that's kind of way the way we felt about Zay and and McCray to an extent. I think there was a little more uneasiness about McCray than there was Zay Mincy. Um, I don't I don't know. I, is it concerning if you don't see him this week? I I think that's safe to say, yeah. But until he picks to go somewhere or, you know, what have you, I don't think you can get too super concerned because, again, we're coming up on a season. Uh, kids are want going to want to visit games. You know, I've talked, to that, I've talked about that before. Um, so uh, until then, I, I don't think there's really any n- major concern. We're not going to 
burn the town down or anything like that. But um, I would I would be surprised, and I would be um, not not necessarily concerned, but I would be cautious if if he doesn't come this week. Wes, are you concerned? Yeah, I would be concerned. Uh, this is starting to remind me of the Matthews. Uh, oh. It's thundering outside my back. I heard that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, saying, hey, you don't hit that hit. The man upstairs <laughs> saying you need to hush. I spoke the name of thou who <laughs> shall not be yeah. spoken. But uh, it's starting to remind me of the tight end. I won't say his name. But uh, it's starting to remind me of that was lightning just came through. But it's starting to remind me of Matthews, uh, the tight end. Uh, I said I wasn't going to say his name. But the tight end situation where we led for so long and we wondered uh, when is he going to go ahead and commit? How many? How long are we going to continue to say that we need for him? Uh, what's taking so long, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you want to lock these type of things down. The kid is very, very talented. So with a kid like that, that's one of the ones you can't like. I don't want to say you can't rush it, but you kind of have to – Put your foot down, but you kind of need them in the class to solidify your DB class because uh, it's kind of not where we would probably want it right now. He could uh, would be a, a great addition to that class. So uh, I really want the kid in the class. Uh, we all know that he's talented and he's worth it. Uh, but I, the low this drags on and the fact that he doesn't come to our supposedly uh, the Friday Night Lights is not uh, as big uh, as it they're changing Friday Night Lights into the barbecue now. And to me, this is our big recruiting weekend. And you want to have a guy like that who's uncommitted, who you're leading for, to have him on campus around other recruits this weekend to go ahead and seal that deal and get that done. So I, I'm, I'm, I don't like when things drag out when we leave for a guy for a long time and we can't get him on campus to go ahead and get him to commit. Yeah, I mean, anytime Bama's pressing on a kid like this, I mean, you, you're going to worry. I don't worry about – Miami, I'm not worried about any of those guys, but if Bama's pressing on him, you know, that that's cause for concern always. Um, let's talk about some guys that are going to be in town, uh, like our entire class <laughs> of committed kids. Um, every single one of our committed kids, with the exception of Kanan Daniels, TJ Abrams, and uh, Jerry Hawkins are all going to be on campus. Now, I believe Abrams already had a trip planned even before he committed. Hawkins, I don't know the reason. I'm, I'm assuming maybe it has something to do with IMG and the way that they operate with visits around this as they get close to the season. Um, they, they just have a whole different ball game of how they handle their visits, like they visit in groups and stuff like that. Um, Kanan Daniels, I haven't heard the reason for. I mean, but he's all the way in Mississippi. I know that Jamonta Waller's coming, though, so that's fantastic news. I have no worries about Kanan Daniels coming. I mean, if you can get 17, 18 of your committed prospects to come for an event this close to school starting back and everything else going on, you're doing great. I mean, including, obviously, DJ Lagway will be on campus as well again. So, um some guys that we know will be coming for the 2024 class. There's there's only two that we can really speak about. There's supposedly supposed to be some surprise guys. The staff doesn't want their names out there right now. You can certainly understand that. Um, they're committed to other teams from, from what we've heard. So, obviously, why the secrecy there? You don't want the team to put any pressure on them and keep them from being able to make this visit. Um, Jamari Howard is supposed to be on campus this weekend now. As you know, if you followed us or any kind of recruiting for Florida here in the last couple months, Jamari Howard was supposed to come to campus two different times in June and was unable to make it. So, we still need him to show up. He's told people who he will be there, so until he doesn't show up, no reason to worry about this, but this is an opportunity. Obviously, Florida State is having a huge – you know, recruiting event this weekend as well. So if we can get Jamari Howard on our camp campus and not theirs, hopefully to give us a leg up in his recruitment. Another cornerback that will be on campus this weekend is Wardell Mack out of Louisiana. Um, now, Wardell Mack, from what everyone has said, is kind of down the list of corners. Uh, obviously, Zay Mincy's at the top. Jamari Howard's right there with him. And they are still – really pushing on Jameer Grimsley as well. 
So I know CJ, we talked about this before the show. What if Wardell Mack comes all the way from Louisiana this weekend and says, Coach, I'm fired up about this, man. I want to be part of this class. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> I'm I, I'm not a coach, so I don't know what's what's a – all I can know is what I can read in a scouting report, what I see on film, where he's rated, and he seems like a really good prospect. So in my mind, you take him. I don't know what his intangibles are though uh, and that's like a big question mark i haven't been around the kid i don't talk to him you know i don't, I don't know what his goals are i don't know I, I don't have any word if he takes plays off or or uh he he doesn't he's not a real go-getter or something like that which would be <laughs> what Corey raymond would know and why he wouldn't want him you know some, for something like that but but as far as i know it, when you look at a guy like him it's it, there's got to be something wrong if you don't want him like I, I trust Corey Raymond enough to know if there's a reason he doesn't want to take him, then there's something else there that we we don't see. On the surface, yeah, you take you take him, you take Wardell Matt, you don't ask questions. But like like I said, we're not in the trenches, so I don't think we have the whole picture because I feel like based on what I know and what I've heard. If he if we wanted him, he'd already be in the class. Um, I, I don't know if he's like a a backup plan or they 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 want to see him some more and kind of gauge how he interacts with the other kids that they're bringing in this week uh, with some of the players that are already there. How they how they want to see how that goes. Maybe there's something there, but like I said, it, just on the surface, I don't see why how you tell him no, but. Obviously, there's something else there that we are not seeing, um, and and that's just kind of that's why you hire the coaches. You know, they make those decisions. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, obviously, on the outside looking in, it, it looks like a great prospect and a kid that you would want to go ahead and add to this class. But I mean, in Corey Raymond, we trust and until he gives us a reason not to. Right. Um. Like I said, there's there's some some mystery names out there and i'm sure before the weekend gets here at least one of those will probably slip it, it almost always does but in case it doesn't you know just keep an eye on our social media pages if you don't already and if as those names get out there we'll put it out there that so and so is on campus and you know hope for the best as we try to close out these last four to five spots in this class not that, I know a lot of people are really down on this visit list as far as the 24 kids go. Well, that's not much of a visit list. Two, three, four guys. Well, guys, I mean, <laughs> we only have right. four or five spots left. <laughs> Who are you going to take? <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, and, and the staff has zeroed in on who those guys are. I mean, they there's – there's four to five positions left, and they're really only zeroed in on seven to eight kids, period. Now, that's not to say if one decides he's going somewhere else, they won't pivot and, and go on to some other guy. I mean, they, they'll do what they need to do unless they feel like it's better to save that spot for, say, a portal kid. Like, oh, well, you know what? We want to get a, a receiver in the portal this year. Or after, uh, obviously, good, good, uh, Godwin leaving the team this, this week, you know, maybe we need to go out in the portal after the season and get another offensive lineman because we weren't planning on that. So it, you got some flexibility here. You don't necessarily have to take 25 kids. I know we'd all like to so we can get that top five class and look, you know, but we Trying don't make this. 290, easy. man. We got to get that 290. That's what everybody yeah, See, wants. Wes needs that 290, coach. <laughs> um, now we're going to talk a little bit about 25 kids, though. And, you know, we really haven't hit too much on the 25 kids yet. But that's another thing about this class filling up is we got to start looking to the future because the staff certainly is. Um, let's talk about some of these names for 2025 that are showing up. And, um, you know, we're not going to spend a whole, whole lot of time breaking each of these down. I mean, it's it, we're not quite to that point yet. Um. Biggest name on the list, DJ Pickett. Number eight overall prospect for the 2025 class, a five-star safety. The only catch is he's out of Tampa. <laughs> hmm. 
I see. And if you're not watching on YouTube, CJ's shaking his head because he knows what goes down when a kid's out of Tampa. I feel like this is Tampa's the new IMG. Like there's some kind of wall around Tampa that we're not allowed to get in there, except for Isaiah Williams. I, before somebody comments, Isaiah Williams is from Tampa. I know that. Um, there's several kids out of Tampa that we're going to have to break through and make a, a, a push with. This is a young man who, oddly enough, a lot of people think Michigan leads for currently. But this will be his third or fourth trip to the swamp in the last uh, few months. So, big-time prospect there. Obviously, we want to see Corey Raymond get, get his foot in the door and go ahead and, you know, try to get another five-star safety to go with Phil Samee in this class. Next guy, Riley Pettijohn. Cool name. Um, Four-star linebacker. Number 54 overall in the early 2025 composite. This is a young man who is a teammate with Xavier Filsamy and will be coming with him to the barbecue. So the staff, using relationships they've already built, bringing in another Texas kid here, Joe Hamilton, in his bag, doing things out in the Lone Star State. Another big Texas kid coming over. Uh, Jay Bateman is saying, look, I'm, I've been done with this class for, for a month now. I'm bored. I'm going to go ahead and go grab some 25 kids. <laughs> Another big-time safety, though, um, four-star out of Jacksonville, Hilton Stubbs, number 75 overall in the composite. Uh, Jacksonville is another, you know, we need to take Jacksonville back. Jacksonville, especially when Urban was here, you know, Jacksonville was locked down for the Gators, and that's something that I know Billy and company want to reestablish. Now, here's a little talk that I want us to get into. I know Wes is going to be excited about this, at least, you know, well, right now. We've got a slew of offensive linemen coming in, and not just project offensive linemen. I'm talking big-time, high-rated offensive linemen, including two five-stars. We're going to go ahead and start with the first one. His name is Michael. And I'm going to butcher this name. Bear with me. Michael Fasusi. <laughs> Number 29 overall in the early composite. Big-time offensive tackle. Um, coming with Lagway in the game. Apparently, DJ is, has been reaching out to this young man. I mean, DJ knows he needs some tackles. <laughs> he wants some big boys to block for him. Another five-star out of Jacksonville, once again, Solomon Thomas. Fasusi was number 29. Solomon Thomas is number 28 in the early composite. So there's two five-star offensive tackles visiting. And to add to it, Owen Straybig. I love that name on an offensive lineman, Stray Big. A 6'8 offensive tackle <laughs> out of Wisconsin. Number 78 overall in the composite. Wes, do you think that Coach Sale and Coach Stapleton have finally are, are building some relationships and might finally turn the corner on the big time offensive line recruiting? I like the fact that they're starting early. Not saying that the staff hasn't started early before. But this is why I was so uh, key on like this year being a year because last year they were able to develop some relationships. And we can see it uh, turn into fruition now with us having the number three class in the country. Uh, hopefully them getting a head start on the 25 class will pay dividends uh, later now, whether it's this year or next summer when we get some of these guys to commit. Do I have the faith that they can get some of these guys at Hearst uh, to our fans? Honestly, Y'all know I'm Mr. Optimistic. I'm, I'm Mr. Uh, Sunshine Pump or whatever you want to call me, but I don't have faith. If, if they can get two of these guys, uh, one of the five stars, I'll feel great about it. I love it. Um, it'll be huge uh, for the, uh, somebody that can come in and start a step in day one. That, that's, that's what you look for in a five star. Somebody that can come in and hopefully play uh, day one. It doesn't even have to be tackled. Sometimes uh, elite tackles come in and they start off as at guard and move later on as sophomores and juniors before they go to the NFL. So if that guy can come in and contribute and give you depth year one, whether it's at guard or, or uh, second on the depth chart, backing up uh, left or right tackle, then you take that. And that's why getting the highly recruited offensive lineman is key 
in, in especially in the SEC when football is won in the trenches. So uh, do I have the faith? No, I'm, I'm happy that they're, they're starting so, so early. And maybe they can build off the relationship of starting early. I don't expect any of these guys to commit anytime soon, but I, I like the idea of having so many offensive linemen for next year's class in now, and they can go ahead and build that relationship. And from what I've heard, I believe Billy has taken, uh, I forget which one, one of the guys that he's really uh, recruiting him himself. Not saying he doesn't recruit any of the guys, but he's going to have Satan. Yeah. Uh, he's going to have his stamp on uh, that kid. So uh, I, I would count that as a win for sale, even though Billy is there helping him. So, yeah. Um, every, and, and let me back up on that for a minute. Everyone asked, you know, is Seton coming to the cookout? And if not, why? Why is he not coming? Well, A, he's an IMG kid, and we already just talked about IMG. They 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 do weird with their visits, um, and it is what it is. His plan as of now is to come to a game in the fall. Now, he is a guy that he's going to take this recruitment for a while. So, it you know, it just is what it is. And his recruitment has been quiet to, to – He's a very quiet young man. Yes, absolutely. He's a very quiet young man. He doesn't say a whole lot to anybody, um, which could be good. It could be bad. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it could be he's one of those kids that's he's silent and he's nice and he doesn't like to give anybody bad news. So, you know what I mean? Everybody might think they lead for him. Um, but the staff as a whole feels really good about Seton, but we'll see. I mean, you, you got to show me the money on that because we we need it. Um, oh, I'm, let me let me back up to Solomon Thomas for a second because I missed a little note on Solomon Thomas. One of Solomon Thomas, the big offensive tackle out of Jacksonville, one of his best friends is Roderick Kearney, already on the team in last year's class. So therein lies some of the inroads we have with with Solomon Thomas as far as his recruitment goes. All right, let's run down a few other names. Uh, one we've talked about before on the show will be in town again this week. Jalen Wiggins, uh, defensive lineman out of Tallahassee, number 87 overall in the composite. This is a kid who I could see possibly being one of the first guys to, to jump in this class. I, I mean, I think we, we feel really good about him as a whole. Um, and, hey, you know, it'll always be nice if you can grab a kid right out from underneath the knolls over there in Tallahassee if you can get him in the class. Uh Wide receiver Kobe Kobe Howard out of Fort Lauderdale. I know a lot of people are really high on this young man. He's a he's not a big kid, but he's a little bigger than some of the other guys we gotten in this class. Right, right around 5'11", 6 foot. He comes in number two seventy six in the two twenty five recruiting rankings. Um, running back Waltez Clark, and from all you know standpoints, Waltez Clark is going to be one of the top running back. Uh, guys that we go after in the 25 class, so get used to this young man's name. He's at a plant high school once again in Tampa. Um, I mean, you're you're fighting that same beast though, man. You got to get that big W in Tampa. You got to you got to pull one of these kids. Uh, number 123 in the early 2025 rankings. Wes, you're shaking your head, man. What's wrong? Nothing. Tampa is same thing with CJ was saying earlier, and you alluded to Tampa is so talent in rich that we have got to start winning battles and there's a lot of talent in tampa and we we gotta we gotta break through like you said it's becoming the new img i just hope we can break through down there because it is enriched with a lot of talented kids man it's as it's as talented as any you know place in the state it really really is um big kids coming out of there every single year we saw it with keely last year i hate to keep breaking west's heart but i mean Look, man, I, I know – you know how Billy is. This is going to be one of those things that's going to eat at Billy. Like, oh, man, we got the – you know. Good point. Good point, Eric. <laughs> Billy doesn't like taking L after L in a certain kind of area of anything. Like, he, it's going to eat at him, and he's going to be like, all right, fine. This is what we're going to do. We're going to get one of these kids, no matter – you know, hooker by crook, and we're going to put our <laughs> stamp on things. <laughs> Um, and one last guy I wanted to talk about, you know, there's there's a lot of other guys coming, but four-star defensive lineman Antonio Coleman out of uh, Alabama. He's number 185 in the current composite. Um, once again, going back over to Alabama, looking at defensive linemen, uh, you know, Coach Chaos has no fear about going over into that state and trying to do some damage against uh, Bama and, of course, Auburn. 
So, guys, this is a pretty good early haul. And like I said, there'll be some other kids as well. There's a lot of other kids who might be in low three stars or not even ranked currently going to be there. And this is one of those things where you start, they, you know, they come over, they get to know you, the coaching staff introduces themselves to them, their families, you know, hey, keep in touch, send, send us your tape, send us your, you know, workouts and all that kind of stuff, and, and we'll get the ball rolling. And that's how you find a lot of these kids like we found in Josiah Davis this year, Isaiah Williams, you know. Um, and some of these guys that aren't ranked now, by the time they play this season, they might jump way up in the rankings between now and then, depending on who's ranking them. You know, um, <laughs> um, one concern that, that I see out of this list and, and names coming, one concern that I have personally is you have no 2025 quarterback visitor. That, to me, that's a little bit of a concern. Um, obviously, there's a host of names out there, Carter Smith, Ryan Montgomery, Achilles Smith Jr., um, of kids you've heard mentioned with the Gators, but none none coming to this event. So, but maybe that's by design. I really don't know. I don't know who they reached out for to try to get to this. Um, CJ, just as a wrap, what are your what are your thoughts on this event and, and the guys we have coming in? Uh, I mean, there's a good mix of different players from different backgrounds, different ratings. Um, you're you're looking you're looking at the future more so again with these guys because we have such a, a full class now to where there's really not a lot more you can do with it given our number of scholarships. Um, and you're right. I would love to see a quarterback for the 25 class, especially with DJ Lagway being there. Um, I think that that would, that would give, you know, make a better impression. Um, and not to say there won't be one. I mean, you always have a guy show up. I, I you know, there's um, a bunch of kids in the area. I would love to see um, AJ Hill from uh, Houston County take a visit. I really like his film. Um, we, we've offered him, you know, getting kids out of the Warner Robins area, though, is pretty, pretty damn hard because Kirby Smart and Georgia have pretty well locked up the Warner Robins, Georgia area, which, which is a shame because when you're talking about a talent rich part of the state, you know, Georgia, you look at the Warner Robins area, there's a lot of kids that came out of there. You know, the Fromms and then Aubrey Solomon came from that area, you know. But, um, no, I would love to see a quarterback. And, and like I said, there's not to say there's not going to be one. We're in Florida. There's a lot of kids that, you know, on a whim drive over there. You know, you don't want to show your whole hand. Um, you've got kids that are maybe committed to come that haven't said so publicly. We're already looking at a few of those kids now that, you know, they don't really want to reveal yet. So we'll see. Um, I, I think, you know, we're not going to have a good grasp on the effect of it until later. And I'm not even talking Monday. I'm talking next month, the next month. Then you're going to kind of understand, you know, how we sit, you know, because we look back at those visits in June and the end of May. Um, at that time, people weren't very excited. They weren't very happy because you didn't see a lot of commits. You didn't see a lot of, uh, you know, people, a lot of the kids start to jump into the class um, but then, you know, you saw the tide turn um, where those impressions you made on those kids, you got a lot of them to commit from the guys that had visited uh, within the month. So, um, you know, don't don't overreact to whatever happens. Give it some time. Let it breathe. Um, like, I, like I said multiple times, at some point we're just going to have to take a step back and let him do what he's doing because, again, you look at where, where they got the number three class in the country. Um, you know, within the last, what, three weeks, we've gotten four more commits. So it's not like we're not doing anything. You know, I understand we live in a very microwave, I want it now kind of world, especially with social media and things. We're in kind of in like a popcorn generation where you just want it to, you know, happen. But at some point, you've got to just kind of take a step back and let them kind of feed those relationships and work with these guys. And, and you know, and I understand being frustrated and I understand things not going well. And I understand, and, and you have every right to as a fan, you know, if you see something that you don't like, definitely you could say something, but, but don't be uneducated about it. You know, make sure you got everything, the facts first, you know, be an educated fan. Don't, don't, don't be somebody who just 
gets trolled on on Twitter and then goes into your feelings. You know, just <laughs> let let these guys do what they're doing. Give it a few weeks. Give it a month or so. Let's talk about how we are next month after this visit. Let's not let's not jump Monday and freak out on reactions unless unless we get three or four more commits. Like if something like that happens again, then yeah, definitely have fun. But if that doesn't happen, don't freak out. Let the guys do what they're doing. We don't have many spots left in this class. <laughs> so I don't I don't foresee a five, six, seven, eight commits within the span of 72 hours happening. <laughs> Even though Billy Billy kind of shot himself in the foot by kind of giving us those expectations at one point. Um, so just just let things breathe, let it take its place, letting those guys enjoy themselves, because that's really what this is about. Letting the kids have a bonding session, especially with 17, 18 commits from this 24 class that are going to be there at the same time. Those guys get to eat together, fellowship together, they're really kind of start to come together as a team. Um, and I think that's more what this is about than than just recruiting. I you nailed everything on the head completely. Um, and one thing else, like CJ said, this visit list and these guys we're covering is all very tentative. I mean, at any moment, a car breaks down or a flight gets canceled. I mean, so keep that in mind. If if one of the one of our commits doesn't show up, and you just hear it on Saturday, uh, and and knock on wood, DJ Lagway doesn't show up. Oh my God, is is, is DJ not? He's going oh to Clemson. God. Is TJ going to Clemson for commit confirmed? His, his flight got rerouted. He's he's headed to he's headed to ATL. What's going on? Yeah, I mean, just realize that just as in our life, it happens in their life. Things happen. Maybe dad gets sick, or mom has to work, or whatever. Have you not? You know, all of that stuff happens to these kids just like it happens in our lives. It's it's not the end all be all. If all of a sudden at the last minute one calls and says, "Sorry, I, I can't make it," unless you hear, "Oh, well, then he showed up at Miami," <laughs> you know, or something like yeah. that. That's when you worry. Not when you hear, "Oh, he just didn't make it because he had car trouble." Uh, I mean, we had guys last year that didn't make make it to games, and fans were out of their mind. Like, "Oh, well, if he really, if he was really interested, he would have made it." Well, not if his battery in his car went dead; <laughs> he couldn't get it. You know. <clears throat> Excuse me. I mean, like, you know, stuff happens to everybody, even teenagers. You know how it goes. Uh, Wes, any anything about this visit list that jumps off the page to you? Um, no, I'm I'm I, I love the visit list. Uh as far as CJR alluded to the fact that so we can't uh and you said it earlier too, we already have like almost at max, so you don't expect a, a 30, 30 kids coming in from the 2024 class. Um, I love the, the the start, like I said before, as the offensive line coaches having some 2025 offensive linemen come in to start to build those relationships. And something I like that CJ said as well is uh, you want to keep just because we have the guys now, you want to keep them in the class. Just because we have them, don't mean it's not signing day. Signing day is five months or what is what is it, about to be August, like five four five. Remember months away. Wes. So remember you Wes, want, the game's got to get this, played. Yes. <laughs> yeah, competition. So competitions have you had to be participated in. <laughs> I'm sorry yeah, to interrupt you, to but that was that was too good of an so, opportunity. No, you're fine. <laughs> yeah. So you still have to actively recruit. And what better way to have the guys all together that's in the class? And maybe would like to say you name the guys that are not gonna be here, to have all those guys there fellowshipping together, uh bonding together, saying, Hey, you know, we're gonna be the twenty. 2024 class we rank number three and then you have say uh you say mccray is there you have mccray involved around that environment uh that's why i hope mincy is there and i hope howard is there so howard can be around that uh environment with those all those committed guys already there even the 2025 guys so i love the list i love that the, the main guys that are in the class are there and, and they get to be around other guys and be around the team as well um and hopefully we can get some things done for sure. Uh, I think I think it can't be understated, as we mentioned at the top, L.J. McCray getting into town today. I think that's a big-time move by the staff, uh, getting him to show up before he does go visit UGA or wherever he may end up at this weekend. You get, you get into his ear now and try to really 
say, hey, are we good? What do we need to do? I mean, I could be inferring anything you want me to be inferring with that comment. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, y'all know what age we're in. We're not, and we're all big, we're all big boys here. We're not going to talk about this stuff like all of this is make-believe and doesn't happen. I'm just not going to do it. It it is what it is. I mean, and and these kids know what it is. (laughs) So, Big boy move by the staff. Get him on campus. Ask him what it takes to get this thing shut down, you know, or at least confirm what you already feel like you believe that he he's he's a lean to the Gators. Well, guys, that's really all we have this week. We just wanted to preview this upcoming you know weekend and all the kids coming and give y'all some names to go to be looking out for and maybe possibly we'll be talking more about in the future, especially. When it comes to the 2025 kids, next week, though, we're going to start having some fun because we're going to start talking some real football, not just uh, recruiting sites, rankings, and, and numbers. You know, we're going to start talking about guys lining up, passes getting thrown, imaginary quarterback competitions happening. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you know, all that coach speak stuff. Things that are uh, and, and hearing Billy saying stuff that's relative to this, that, and the other. Um, it's exciting, man. We're really excited. You know, the, the season's going to be here before you even know it. I mean, this month flew by after the great June we had in recruiting. This, I feel like this month has just been us kind of talking about stuff from show to show just to try to get from A to B, and, and we're getting there, man. We're almost there. These guys – this is the time where if, if you're a praying person, you pray for good health for these young men and that everything, you know, goes their way and nobody gets hurt and, you know, we're ready, man. Hopefully this season surprises a lot of people. I mean, it, it's not going to take a whole lot. So, CJ, you got any thoughts before we jump? Uh, yeah, just well, you kind of touched on it uh, a minute ago. I want to send uh, thoughts and prayers out to Keontae Goodwin and his mother and his family. Um, yes, thank you, you for you saying know, that. Um, you know, once you're once you're a Gator, as far as I'm concerned, you're you're a Gator for life. You're with us. Uh, you're our family. Um, so we're definitely going to support you. Uh, understand things happen. You know, wherever you play football next. Good luck to you, man. Uh, and if you I, don't, and even if you don't. You know, good luck to you. Um, I, I hope that everything goes well with your mother, whatever treatment she's going through. Um, I understand how difficult it is to lose your mother. I've been through that. Um, so definitely thoughts and prayers out there to Mr. Goodwin. Um, good luck to you, man. I, I can't tell you that I do anything different than what you're doing. Um, I appreciate you being upfront and very honest with all of us, even though you didn't have to. Um you know, um, but for sure, I think that that needs to be said. Um, make sure that people understand that this isn't a spiteful thing. You didn't leave to chase a bag. You didn't leave to because, you know, you weren't getting playing time or anything like that. These are some real personal reasons, um, some real justifiable reasons for somebody to to take a hardship and go be with his family in a time when they really need him there. Um, so good luck to you. We love you. We're praying for you. Um, we hope that your mother is doing well. Um, we look forward to seeing what you do next. Um, and just know that you, you've always got a place with us in our heart. Um, so definitely wanted to, to make sure that was known uh, about Mr. Goodwin. Absolutely. I'm, I'm really glad you said that. I know I mentioned it earlier, and I kind of meant to segue to that, and I, and I didn't. But very well said. I know a lot of people have said, was there a chance he comes back and, and this, that, and the other? Guys, just just say a prayer for that young man's family and his mother, if that's what you do. If you don't, if that's not your thing, do what you would do, you know, to, to wish th- good thoughts right. for somebody. Um, right. It's bigger than football right it's now. It's bigger than football. If that young man never plays another snap of football, that was his destiny. That was the will of his life. It It, it is what it is. Um, you know, it, it's a game. At the end of the day, it's just a game. And nothing 
about playing football replaces losing a parent, a loved one, a family member, whoever it may be. So just just keep that young man in your thoughts, your prayers, whatever it is you do, and um, and lift him up, man. Lift him and his mom up for healing. That's all you can do. Wes, man, uh, what you got? Take us home, man. You didn't get you didn't take us home last week. So. Take us home, Wes. Yeah, I lo- I heard something before uh, uh, when CJ said that. I I just was into what he was saying. I forgot where I, how I was going to close, but uh, um, hey, practice starts next week. Uh, so you guys, uh, Hirsch just talked about that. I can't wait <laughs> football season. I don't know whoever watched the NFL. You know, you got preseason in a couple of weeks. July is that month. You, you got to get over to get to August. And then it becomes real for us football junkies. So uh, best time of the year, closing out July, getting ready for August. I uh, can't wait to Monday to, to start getting into diving into what happened. Uh, Monday, I think Billy has like a thing, a press conference uh, Saturday or something, I believe, or Sunday. I can't remember, but I know the actual practice starts Monday. So can't wait. Can't wait to give you guys the news. Appreciate you guys for the listen. Uh, and as always, go Gators. Yes, sir. Go Gators, guys. Check out the pod of the people this week and everything. And, man, it's about that time, boys. Get hyped. Catch you next week. Go Gators, buddy. Peace out.